What's going on everyone? I am back here with my full review of the Asus G751 uh, JL gaming laptop. Um, this particular model uh, will run you about $1,300. Of course, that's before taxes and fees and shipping and any of that that could be added on. Uh, but the base retail price is about $1,300. Uh, and for that price, uh, the specs that you get in this particular uh, gaming laptop is they're pretty decent, um, to be honest. Uh, now, it's not the best. Uh, you can definitely get a higher spec laptop for um, uh, several hundred dollars more, I believe. Around two grand, uh, you can get a pretty high spec gaming laptop from Asus. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go over the specs. Uh, that this laptop is packing. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with that. Uh, so the first thing is this uh, laptop has the Intel Core i7 um, uh, processor uh, clocked at 2.6 gigahertz uh, that can also be turbo boosted up to 3.6 gigahertz uh, when the processor needs more power. Or uh, So that's a nice feature. Uh, it is also running Windows 8.1, which I believe is the latest uh, Windows operating system for eight, uh, Windows 8. Um, I do actually believe Windows 10 was just recently released. Uh, so you can actually upgrade this laptop to Windows 10 for free uh, if you want to do that. Uh, but I would actually recommend not doing that uh, because there could be a lot of compatibility issues with games and applications. Uh, so I would actually hold off on upgrading to Windows 10 uh, until you find out uh, that your games are supported on that new operating system. Uh, but me personally, I'm not going to get Windows 10 uh, for that particular reason, because I don't want to have any issues. Um, but anyway, next up, uh, it has uh, this particular model has 8GB of DDR3 1600MHz uh, RAM. Um, that can also be upgraded to 32 gigabytes. Now, there is a model of this particular laptop. Uh, it's still called the G751JL, uh, but the newer version of this comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM. So, to be honest, I'm, that kind of annoys me because when I purchased this, that particular version, or the newer updated version, did not exist. Uh, so, the Newer version that has 16 gigs of RAM for the same exact price as this one um, was just released, I, I think, about a couple weeks ago. So uh, it's kind of a bummer. But anyway, yes, this model has 8 gigs of RAM. Um, the graphics card that this gaming laptop is running is a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 965M uh, with 2 gigabytes of GDDR. Uh, five dedicated video RAM. Um, now the 965M is a pretty decent g uh, graphics card. Uh, it's definitely not as good as the 980M, uh, but the 965 can definitely get the job done uh, with no issues whatsoever. I mean, you cannot play the games on high settings, unfortunately, but you can definitely get some pretty, really, really decent looking graphics out of that graphics card. Uh, okay. So next up, it has a one terabyte uh, hard drive that is clocked at 7200 RPM. Um, and again, uh, the newer version of this that comes with 16 gigs of RAM also comes packed with a um, one terabyte hard drive as well as a 256 gigabyte SSD, uh, which again is uh, quite cool and um, kind of annoys me that that happened. But anyway, uh, that is what's packed in here. Uh, it has a DVD dual layer uh, super drive, so it can uh, burn and read, or basically read and write, all of the major types of DVDs and CDs. Now, it is not a Blu-ray disc drive. Uh, if you want a Blu-ray disc drive, you can either purchase a separate drive to use with this laptop, or you can purchase a more uh, expensive model uh, that already has a Blu-ray drive built in. Um, next up, it has a built-in uh, card reader, uh, which is on the s uh, side over here. And I'll get to that uh, in the hardware portion of this video. Um, 
Okay, now as for, let me check this real quick. Uh, as for the battery, uh, it is an eight cell, uh, 6,000 milliamp rechargeable battery, uh, which should give you about four to five hours of normal usage without gaming. Uh, now, if you plan to uh, uh, use a game or play a game rather uh, on the battery of this laptop, uh, you're most likely going to get about two to three hours of runtime, uh, depending on the type of game that you are uh, running at the time. So pretty decent, um, but most of us are probably just going to leave it plugged in while we're playing a game because with that you get better performance and an overall better experience. But if you're just wanting to use normal computer functions, uh, using it on the battery should do just fine. <clears throat> and as for the weight, uh, this laptop is quite heavy. Uh, you're not going to want to actually carry it around for long periods of time um, because it is uh, weighs in at about 8.5 pounds, which is quite a hefty uh, laptop. So picking it up with one hand is nearly impossible unless you're a really, really strong person. So you can kind of do it there, but it's really really awkward so most of the time you just want to have this sitting on a desk of some kind while you use it you're not going to want to hold it or anything like that because that's just going to be really really tough <laughs> it does have 80211 and dot 80211 uh ac wi-fi so it has the fastest speeds of wi-fi you can get currently and it also has bluetooth 4.0 so you can get uh, the latest version of Bluetooth. Now, I do believe there is a version 4.1 for Bluetooth, uh, but this particular model does not have that. Anyway, so now that is all of the specifications, or main specifications, that this laptop uh, has packed in it. Um, now, let's go ahead and move on to what I think about the design. Now, the design of this laptop is actually quite nice. It's got a matte finish uh, around here, as you can see. And then you have this metal, sort of an aluminum strip down the middle uh, with an Asus logo here and a glowing red um, Republic of Gamers logo. Uh, so the design is quite nice, as you can see. Um, and the matte finish actually keeps fr uh, fingerprints off of it. Uh, there's, I mean, it'll still attract some smudges in here and there. But for the most part, it keeps fingerprints um, and dust off of it quite nice. Uh, here is the bottom of it, as you can see. It's kind of got a uh, ergonomic design. you got different cutouts here for battery, and so you can get access to replacing the hard drive and uh, RAM slots and all of that good stuff there. And then if you look at the back of it, it has dual fan support, as you can see here. It's kind of really big. It's off screen, but you have a fan on the left and right side which give you really, really decent, really good uh, cooling capabilities, which in turn uh, give you better performance uh, with your games. So the cooler the laptop, the better you will uh, be able to play games. Uh, so it's really nice that it has a dual fan, uh, dual fan design. Most uh, laptops that only support one fan uh, tend, to do, uh, tend to overheat and could potentially drop performance. Uh, to s conserve power and to prevent overheating. So really nice uh, that that is on there. So overall, the design, in my opinion, is really, really nice. Uh, I, Asus did a fantastic job on that part. Um, the only thing I, the only complaint I think I have is the weight. Um, I wish it were thinner or a little bit thinner and a little bit lighter. Um, so it is really, really hefty um, in my opinion. But overall, that's Probably the only complaint I have with the design. Other than that, it is quite nice. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so now let's go ahead and move on to hardware. And what uh, inputs and outputs that this laptop has on it. So, uh, starting on the front here. It's kind of hard to see. Um, since it's all black, it kind of blends in. But right here we have a power indicator, which is currently flashing because it is in standby mode. Uh, and then we have... Uh, the battery indicator, uh, the uh, hard drive indicator, uh, the uh, airplane mode, and the locks um, button. Or not button, what am I saying? Uh, the lock light, essentially letting you know that you have a Kensington lock or something like that connected. <clears throat> if we move to this side, 
it's quite heavy, like I said, so it's kind of an awkward thing to do. Uh, then we have three audio jacks. Uh, we have two for uh, headphone jack or audio output, and then we have one for audio input. Uh, then we have two USB 3.0. We have a Thunderbolt port, uh, which is the same exact uh, input port that you would find on a MacBook. So you can use that uh, with a mini display port connector if you would so choose to do that. Uh, then we have an HDMI output uh, for displaying on an HDTV. Uh, your LAN Ethernet connection, so you can use this on a wired connection. Uh, and then we have our VGA connector uh, to connect to external monitors uh, that support that. And we have the charging connector. On the back, like I said, we have the dual fan design. And on this side, we have the Kensington lock slot. If the camera will focus in here. Let's see if I can get it to force focus. There we go. Okay, so then we have the Kensington lock slot. We have two more USB uh, 3.0 ports, which totals to four. And then we have the DVD super drive right here. And then lastly, but not least, we have the two-in-one SD card reader. Uh, so you can read SD cards from a camera or other media source. So that's nice. And then, like I said, on the bottom, you have doors and stuff like that so you can get access to the hard drive and the RAM. <clears throat> okay, so now if we go and open up the screen, uh, it, since it's in power uh, standby mode, it is going to uh, boot up now. Uh, but the keyboard is backlit, so you get a red backlit keyboard so you can view the uh, keys in the dark or a lower light situation. And then we have our trackpad right here on the bottom portion, kind of offset uh, offset to the left-hand side. I'm not sure why that is, but uh, most likely for comfort. Um, but yeah, it's a full-size trackpad. It is not multi-touch or multi-gesture support. It only supports one finger or two fingers for scrolling. Uh, and then you have the left and right dedicated buttons for left click and right click. Uh, and then we have the 17.3 inch, it's kind of hard to get this on screen, 17.3 um, inch uh, widescreen touchscreen display. Um, so it's that's diagonally, by the way. And it is touchscreen, so you can see here, oops, as you can see, you could touch it and it will react just like a normal touchscreen Windows uh, tablet. And it, all, it has all of the functions of a Windows tablet, uh, as you might come to expect. So you have mo uh, 10 gesture, 10 finger point uh, support. So it has multi-touch, so you can use two fingers, five fingers, all 10 fingers if you choose to do that. And it will, it will react um, accordingly. Um, okay, so, and it is also a 1080p display, by the way. So it has full HD resolution at 9... Uh, Okay, so let's go back down here to the keyboard. So we have a few dedicated keys. So we uh, on this side, we have a dedicated ROG button, which takes you to the ROG hub, uh, which would then allow you to uh, customize settings for the laptop and basically optimize it for your personal usage preferences, uh, depending on the type of games you want to play and that stuff there. Uh, and then on this side, we have... A range of dedicated buttons. It's kind of got off. Let's see if we can get that back. Okay, so right up here we have a dedicated recording button uh, that is used for the included uh, NVIDIA GeForce Experience uh, software. So when you hit that uh, within a game or when you're playing a game, it will instantly record your gameplay and save it to your videos folder. So it has a built-in uh, capture card essentially for video games. Uh, it will not capture the desktop unfortunately, but it will record uh, gameplay uh, really, really nicely, and it has a little red indicator light on it uh, to let you know if you are currently recording or not. Um, the next to that, we have a dedicated Steam button, which will launch the Steam app in big picture mode, which I don't personally like. Um, I don't tend to use that very often because of that reason. Uh, and then we have three... Um, keys here, uh, macro keys that you can easily customize to your preferences. You have M1, M2, and M3 uh, that you can choose to do with whatever you would like. 
Um, and then that's basically all the dedicated keys on this particular keyboard. All the rest are standard to Windows. So you have the Windows button, the space bar, all that good stuff. Um, now you do have uh, color-coded keys here. I don't know if you could see it. The W, A, S, and D keys are kind of outlined in red. Uh, basically, that's to let you know those are the four main keys uh, when using a video game of some kind. Such, so Say, for example, Call of Duty. Uh, these would be the keys that you would use to move your character around. Um, so it's kind of cool that they highlighted that so you can get easy access and know exactly where to put your fingers. Uh, and then lastly, on this side, we have our power button, which, of course, turns on and off the power. And uh, right underneath here, uh, basically right below the screen, uh, there is a, a stereo speaker system, which is actually quite good, uh, to be honest. Uh, there's a, a left speaker on this side here uh, and a right speaker here, and it kind of is surround sound in a way. Uh, because when you play music or anything like that through these speakers, <clears throat> um, the sound kind of just comes out and surrounds uh, the entire space that you are listening in, uh, which is kind of cool. And also there is a built-in subwoofer as well, uh, so it gets some nice deep tones uh, as well as bass. Uh, and I believe the subwoofer is on the bottom portion, so let's see if we can take a look at that. Uh, yes, so the subwoofer is right here on the bottom. So this little cutout vent looking area is where the subwoofer is at. Uh, so that's kind of cool. <clears throat> and there is also a built-in array microphone uh, that uh, it's same, essentially it's the same thing that uh, the PlayStation Eye camera for the PlayStation 3 uh, had. Where basically there was essentially four microphones kind of lined up in a row. Uh, to give you some pretty decent microphone audio. Uh, and those are also kind of down here where the speaker is as well. Uh, so pretty nice audio quality within this laptop. Okay, so, and then it's, I can't really go up all the way on this, unfortunately, but at the very top here on the screen, we have an HD webcam uh, that is capable, capable of recording video at 30 frames a second at 720p. Now, I don't know if that's true because the videos that I have recorded with this particular really good quality, um, it comes out really, seeming like it's, it comes out in really low frame rates um, and stuff like that. So I really wouldn't, wouldn't recommend using the camera for uh, dedicated video purposes. Um, it's okay to use for applications such as Skype and uvu and other video chatting services such as that but um i would not use it to dedicate pictures it just not very good um okay <clears throat> anyway um now that's basically it of the hardware so now i'm going to give you guys um my initial impressions with games that i have played on it the one game that I'm going to highlight in general is GTA V. Uh, that is one of the main games that I play on this laptop on a daily basis. And I can say that it runs really, really well on this laptop. Um, of course, it's not going to be running at high settings, um, as some other laptops might be able to do that. Uh, but this particular model can't run it at high settings, but or ultra settings, forgive me. Um, it can run at high, but not ultra. But the settings that I have kind of tweaked around with and configured uh, within the settings menu, uh, the performance that I'm getting out of GTA V on this laptop is absolutely superb, in my opinion. Um, now, I have to keep it plugged into a power source, unfortunately, to be able to keep the frame rate up, uh, which is not a big deal. But generally, the frame rate that I'm getting <coughs> uh, while playing GTA V is around give or take 48 to 60 frames it, it varies depending on where i am in the city um so say for example i'm in the downtown los santos area uh, and i'll get about 55 to 60 frames a second um it'll go up and down uh but in between that number uh, but it stays pretty consistent within that range 
Um, now, if I move, say I'm going to go out to Blaine County or something like that, or move out of the city, uh, the frames will dr drop down to about 48 to 53 frames a second. Um, so still not bad, um, but it definitely loses some frame rate due to um, some of the graphical uh, things that are going on in that particular area. <clears throat> um, then if I go inside of a building... Uh, say, for example, uh, example, a convenience store, uh, I will get about, or I will exactly uh, get a very stable 60 frames a second while I'm inside of a building. So um, that's really nice. <clears throat> and I will post the settings that I'm currently using for GTA 5 on this laptop. I'll post those in the description below so you guys can try it out for yourself and see how that works. Now, if it doesn't work for you, you might have to tweak some of the settings and put some settings up or down depending on what you might need uh, to get better performance. Uh, but I will post the settings that I am getting with these um, settings and frame rate. So, um, anyway, that is generally... Um, the review of this laptop. Um, hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, I basically, I think I covered all the main bullet points of this laptop. Um, now, also, I actually forgot to mention, I do have played GTA 4 as well on this laptop, and it gets about, I don't know, give or take about a steady 54 frames a second everywhere, inside and out. So I'm not exactly sure how it's getting about 50, almost 60 frames a second in GTA 4 because GTA 4 really doesn't support that high of a frame rate. But somehow it's getting a really, really high frame rate. Um, so I'll go ahead and post the settings for GTA 4 as well so you uh, guys can try that out as well if you would like to. Um, but yeah, overall this laptop is absolutely wonderful. Um, I would highly recommend picking this up. Um, I really don't think you guys are, would regret it. Um, it plays games incredibly well. Of course, like I said, it doesn't play them on high settings or on the best settings possible because it's not the most ex highest spec laptop or desktop, whatever, uh, that you can get. But for what this is and the portability and the price, everything combined, it is a wonderful gaming laptop. Um, it plays games just absolutely superb. Uh, so, yeah, I would definitely recommend getting this laptop if you guys are in the market for a gaming laptop. Now, if you're more in the market for a cheaper <clears throat> um, gaming PC of some kind, I would recommend going with a desktop because you can get um, basically the same specs for a bit cheaper. Um, but the reason this is so expensive is because it's a laptop and it's portable and it's all that stuff. Uh, but, yeah, anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, this has been my full review of the Asus ROG G751JL gaming laptop. Uh, so, once again, hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button right down there. Also, hit that like button as well. That is much appreciated and lets me know that you guys are enjoying my videos. And also, if you guys have any questions or comments or anything relating with this laptop, I'll leave a comment in the section below and I'll get back to it as soon as I can. Um, now if I don't know the, the answer to your question, uh, I will do my best to figure it out, but I am, I may not always be able to answer, uh, because I do get a lot of comments on a daily basis, so if I miss your comment, I apologize, um, but yeah, that's basically it. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this video once again, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.